Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where the Bible and critical thinking meet to give you real Christian commentary about the things that matter. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get into the video. The compromise being brought into the church by writers and influencers and speakers like Jackie Hill Perry is absolutely appalling, and it gets more and more obvious by the day. Perry is a contributor for the Gospel Coalition and Desiring God, and she's also the author of the book Gay Girl, Good God. Just for context, there is a Supreme Court nominee in the United States named Katanji Brown Jackson. This woman publicly stated what she believes about issues like abortion and transgenderism. In a recent video, Katanji was asked by Senator Marsha Blackburn, quote, what is a woman, end quote. Her response to the senator was, quote, I don't know, I'm not a biologist, end quote. I suppose she also can't identify a car crash because she's not a mechanic. She probably can't tell you what her child's name is because she's not a linguist. Maybe she can't even tell you that it's raining outside because she's not a meteorologist. This is the foolishness of the secular worldview. She was also asked if she thought that there were, quote, differences between men and women that are enduring, end quote. Katanji's response to that was, quote, it's hard for me to comment. And videos of all these incidents will be linked in the description. So here we have a woman whose mind has clearly been so polluted by secularism that she literally cannot tell you what a woman is and cannot affirm any differences between men and women at all. This marks the first time in the history of the United States that a nominee to the highest court in the land is so foolish and immoral that they can't define the biological difference between men and women. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. This is a full frontal assault on God's design for men and women. Saying that you don't know what a woman is is just a plain lie. Contrast this with Genesis 5-2, which says, quote, Male and female he created them, and he blessed them and named them man when they were created, end quote. I know that we haven't even gotten into Jackie's comments yet, but the context here is very important, and we will get there, I promise. On the issue of abortion, Katanji Brown Jackson has also made her views crystal clear. When questioned by Senator Dianne Feinstein, Katanji made it very clear that she has absolutely no agenda whatsoever, not even an inkling of an idea, to overturn or otherwise oppose the pro-abortion policies of the past, including Roe v. Wade. In her view, these things are legal precedent and they can't be touched. The fact that this case violates the law of God and basic morality thereof is of no consequence to Katanji Brown Jackson. Apparently, the fact that there is precedent for abortion means that you cannot fight it, or at least that there is no urgent moral responsibility on the behalf of a judge to fight it. By contrast, the Bible just plainly states, quote, you shall not murder in Exodus 20 verse 13. You see, the Bible doesn't care about what your evil court precedent is. Get the job done, do the right thing. The Word of God gives us our moral marching orders, and you can either follow them or rebel against it. Christians know that a unique human life from conception to death is not a life that you can take by murder. Katanji was then asked by Senator Kennedy of Louisiana when human life begins. Her response was, I don't know. Perhaps Miss Katanji Brown Jackson could just save us all the time, make it a little easier on us, and tell us the short list of things that she actually does know. Although, I'm sure that list grows smaller by the day. By the way, if you think I'm saying these things just to be needlessly rude or sarcastic and that it's wrong and unchristlike, on the contrary, like Jesus often did, I am using sarcasm to illustrate the absurdity and wickedness of the immoral worldview at hand. Think of how often Jesus asked the Pharisees, have you not read? When he knew for a fact the Pharisees had read the law and the prophets. In fact, they prided themselves on that. Consider the fact that in Matthew 23, Jesus tells the Pharisees that they are sons of hell, and he also calls them a bunch of evil snakes and a brood of vipers. But those were the Pharisees, you might say. Yes, correct. And the Pharisees, immoral as they were, actually had in some ways a much more ethical worldview than people like Katanji Brown Jackson do. Therefore, I see absolutely no theological problem with using a little bit of sarcasm to rebuke this wicked woman. But regardless of your opinion on how to rebuke her, surely we can all agree that we should. At least we can all agree that praising this woman, who has made it her mission to violate God's word in her work, surely we can all agree that would be wrong, right? Well, this is where Jackie Hill Perry comes in. Jackie Hill Perry posted the following tweet. It shows a picture of Katanji Brown Jackson's daughter admiring her, approving of her mother as she proudly smiles at her in a Senate hearing. Jackie excitedly calls this, quote-unquote, a mood. 
Now, a mood is what I believe the kids are saying these days to refer to things that are positively relatable. You see someone sleeping, and you say, that's a mood, indicating that you'd very much enjoy sleeping. In any case, many people were commenting on this post, saying that it's inappropriate for a Christian to be posting positively in any way about a person who promotes anti-biblical wicked worldviews like pro-choice ideology and transgenderism. But Jackie, she was ready and willing to defend her horrible statement. She responded to the well-deserved back class she received by saying, quote, I really don't owe anyone but God and my spouse an explanation. This picture is beautiful, she says. A daughter, proud. Her mother, accomplished. It makes me think of my girls and the smile I hope to give them someday. Take that and do with it as you please, end quote. So here it is, folks. I wasn't praising her. I was just saying it's a beautiful picture of a daughter supporting her mother. Who could oppose that? It's such a nice thing. Well, that's a nice try, but it actually makes no biblical difference. Here's why. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 34 through 35, quote, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, end quote. Jesus came to separate the wheat from the chaff, those who would bow to him and those who would refuse to even if, according to Jesus, it's a mother and her daughter. So I have a simple biblical question. Biblically speaking, should a daughter look up to her wicked mother with approval? Should a daughter admire her mother for her excellent accomplishments when those accomplishments include disobeying God's word directly? Should a daughter commend her mother in any way for acting sinfully? These questions are basic ethical ones that any Christian should be able to answer with one word. No. In Romans 1.32, Paul says that there are those who not only do wicked things themselves, but who also, quote, give approval to those who practice them, end quote. Family or not, supporting people in their opposition to God's word is sinful. Suppose this was a picture of an evil ruler named, oh, let's say Herod, who had also supported the murder of babies in scripture. See Matthew chapter 2 about that. Should a Christian post a picture of Herod's son or daughter looking at him with admiring eyes and saying, that's a mood? What a great photo that is? No, obviously not. You cannot simply separate the disgusting and wicked worldview that these people support in their work from a family photo when their family is supporting them in that wicked work in the very photo itself. It's not complicated at all. But Colin, that example doesn't work, because you see, Herod actually made the order to kill people. Katanji Brown Jackson, she just defends other people's right to. She's just a judge. She's not a ruler. Okay then, suppose a Christian posted a picture of a Nazi-sympathizing judge who did not directly themselves order any Jews to be killed, but they did swear that they would protect the right of other people to kill the Jews. Should we post pictures of that person and their children and say, what a mood? No, that would be wrong, and I think Jackie Hill Perry would oppose that. But that's the Nazi atrocities we're talking about, Colin. Come on, that's not the same example as abortion. You're right. There's an important difference between the two. The difference being that abortion has killed 61 million innocent lives, while the Nazis, well, they only took 6 to 11 million lives. So if you are against posting a picture of a Nazi-sympathizing judge in a positive light, then why aren't you against posting a picture of a judge that supports and defends an even more massive atrocity in a positive light? Maybe it's because while you've been accusing conservative Christians of being inconsistent, you actually forgot what the textbook definition of inconsistency is. Just a thought. Let me offer another example. Suppose a woman was an exotic dancer who took her clothes off and danced in front of other people for money. Suppose this woman was going to an event to receive an award for being the stripper of the month at her local establishment. Should her family come and support her at the award ceremony? No, that would be wrong. Should a Christian post a picture of her family knowing the context and them supporting her in this sin and say, this is such a mood? Also no. I could give you a million other examples, but they all demonstrate the painfully obvious truth that we already understand. That Jackie Hill Perry's praise of Katanji Brown Jackson is just plain wrong, sinful, and absolutely inconsistent with anything resembling the Christian worldview. Now, let me deal with two possible objections because I know there will be many. There are those who will say, but Colin, Jackie Hill Perry actually opposes abortion. She wasn't supporting Katanji outright in her position. She was just supporting the healthy dynamic of a family that really loves each other. How could anyone be against that? 
First, the latter part has already been thoroughly debunked in this video. That's not all that was happening in the photo. And second, allow me to show you another tweet, which Jackie Hill Perry, well, she took the liberty of liking it. She liked this tweet with a picture of Katanji Brown Jackson, which said this, quote, Highly qualified, extremely experienced, ready to serve, history maker, confirm Katanji Brown Jackson, end quote. No picture of her daughter here, just a picture of her that not only praises her work, but also excitedly declares that the best thing to do is to nominate her to the Supreme Court. That tweet was liked by Jackie Hill Perry, but of course, she'll swear up and down that she wasn't actually supporting her in that photo. Okay then, that is direct praise, that is direct support, it's all on camera, that is evidence of admiring a wicked woman who promotes sin in the world actively. And it is utterly shameful for any Christian to admire such a person. Ephesians 5.11 says, quote, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, end quote. But rather than exposing the sinful worldview here, Jackie Hill Perry is happy to applaud the one who is advancing it in her judicial work. So to the organizations like Desiring God and the Gospel Coalition who platform Jackie, I think you should start asking yourselves if this is the type of brand ambassador that you want. Ask her to recant this and repent of it, and then we can have the forgiveness and reconciliation that we're all striving for here and put this all behind us. But if, on the other hand, this is the way that Jackie wants to interact with the culture, then she really has no business giving Christians advice on how to interact with the culture, because this is just pitiful. I don't say any of this to be mean. I'm saying this with passionate love to demonstrate how far we've strayed from the actual standard of scripture that we claim to follow. Imagine what the Apostle Paul would have said about someone like Katanji Brown Jackson's work. Would he have admired her in any way, as Jackie Hill Perry so clearly does? Or would he have opposed it passionately? The fact that many evangelical Christians will be more outraged by my tone in this video than the fact that Jackie Hill Perry actually praised a wicked, pro-choice judge, well, that just tells you everything you need to know about the moral compass of the average evangelical. Thou shalt be nice is more important for whatever reason than thou shalt not murder. The second objection some will have with this video is that many conservative Christians on the other side of the aisle supported Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, well, he's definitely acted sinfully in his position in some ways. And my argument against that is simple. If it is wrong to support Donald Trump, then it makes no difference in this specific ethical situation. If it is right to support Donald Trump, then that also makes no difference in this specific ethical situation. In other words, it's irrelevant. It's a red herring, and I'm not falling for it. And therefore, I have no interest in talking about it in this video. Let's focus on the topic at hand. If you want to deal with the argument that's actually present, go ahead. But don't bring up stuff that is completely unrelated to this situation. The fact is, this is an appalling development in what calls itself evangelical Christianity. So stay far away from the inconsistent and unbiblical teaching of Jackie Hill Perry. Unless, of course, she repents of this, as we hope she will, and goes another direction. And pray for her that she would stop praising these evil people and turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you never miss another one. If you didn't like that video for any reason, then I invite you to watch my Frequently Asked Questions video, link in description, where I deal with common objections and define the purpose and goal of my channel using scripture. This channel is funded by generous donations from my amazing patrons. If you'd like to help us put out more videos just like this one, hit the link in the description or go to patreon.com slash Colin A. Miller. You can donate to my ministry there and earn tons of rewards just like these. And until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.